the other officer made some comment that he was high as fuck, uh, although the video did not support that description. Welcome to the Rebel Chaser channel. My name is Gail, and this clip comes from Judge David Reed at the Yolo County Superior Court in California. He is hearing a 1538.5 motion. And what that is, it's a pretrial motion asking the court to exclude evidence obtained by an illegal search and seizure. Um, I'm not showing you the entire hearing because it was over several days and it was very slow. <laughs> um, and they had erased the first half before I even realized it was there. So uh, I'm just showing you the closing arguments, which you'll get everything pretty much in the closing arguments. And then the, the judge comes back and gives his decision. So I'm showing you those two things. You'll understand everything just from those. But let me know what you guys think in the end. I don't want to give it away. Let's let's just uh, hear argument on a 1538.5, Mr. Betts. Sure. Um, Your Honor, I would start off with the fact that clearly there was no warrant here. So then it's on the prosecution to justify uh, the arrest of Mr. King uh, based on uh, other factors. Here, what was very clear is that the reason given for the arrest of Mr. King was that he was intoxicated in public, that he was publicly intoxicated. And um, for that standard, um, the officer still has to show that uh, he had probable cause to believe that he was so intoxicated in a public place where he couldn't care for himself. What we he what we see on the video, Your Honor, is, is not somebody who's too intoxicated to safely care for themselves. We see somebody who had a rational conversation with the officer that when movements were made around the residence, they were made with purpose. In other words, they were made to get a tablet. They were standing up at the direction of the officer. These were things that um, certainly do not indicate a uh, inability to take care of oneself. In fact, um, the court saw that Mr. Uh, King was attempting to download an app in order to get a ride sharing app. And really what happened, Your Honor, is that once he was outside, kind of at the direction of the officers to uh, cool the situation down, um, he was trying to utilize his um, vehicle at one point for charging his apl application, his his tablet and or phone. And we heard from the officer that both of those uh, items, the phone was out of battery and the tablet was low on battery. We also heard that he was attempting to use the Wi-Fi of the residence, which is why he was standing on the driveway of the residence, because he needed the Wi-Fi in order to contact a ride sharing app. And this wasn't something where um, Mr. King walked outside, said, am I free to leave, and then tried to drive off, which was um, the way it was initially presented. It was It's much more nuanced than that. There were several conversations inside with Mr. King if he was free to leave. He was told he was free to leave. The officers asked uh, if he wanted a ride. He indicated he went back and forth on using a ride-sharing app versus the officers giving him a ride. Um, but in order to take a ride from the officers, he would have to give up his Fourth Amendment right and consent to a search, which he clearly did not want to do. But that doesn't mean that he's publicly intoxicated. Simply because he's asserting his Fourth Amendment rights doesn't mean that he's publicly intoxicated. In fact, it shows a rational decision-making process where he's not uh, publicly intoxicated. In addition, we know that the officers did not perform any sort of field sobriety tests or DRE on Mr. King. We heard from uh, officer uh, Geary that it's very difficult to determine if somebody's under the influence of multiple substances. And in fact, um, that the only way to really be sure of that is to put somebody through a battery of tests, which did not happen here, uh, or uh, a test of uh, some sort of a urine test or blood test, which again, did not happen here. There is no indication that Mr. King was going to get in his car and drive off and the bottom line is what he was arrested for was public intoxication. So the prosecution cannot try to go back now and justify an arrest for something else when the arrest was for public intoxication. Um, then what happened, Your Honor, was that it was a search incident to arrest after he was placed under arrest where the items were found um, in Mr. King's uh, pocket. Uh, and I believe as the officer testified, 
um, in his in his waistband. And so um, here the prosecution would have to show that the officer had probable cause to believe that he was so intoxicated in a public place where he couldn't take care of himself. But again, I don't believe that there's any evidence of that. I think if anyone were to see someone come out of a bar on a Friday or Saturday night um, who has been drinking, that doesn't mean that they're publicly intoxicated. If anybody's ever been to a concert where people, you know, indulge in smoking marijuana and then they walk out to the parking lot, that doesn't mean that they're free to be arrested for public intoxication. There still has to be probable cause that he was so intoxicated that he couldn't care for himself. And I think what we see on the video is that the um, officers were uh, tired of Mr. King kind of waffling if he wanted to take a ride with them or if he wanted to use a ride sharing app. And at that point is when he was arrested. In fact, what he was doing at that point, if the court recalls in the video, is that Mr. King was asking to go to back to his vehicle in order to get his belongings for the night, which seems very reasonable and rational, that he was trying to get a backpack, that he was trying to get a, 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 a suitcase so that he would have belongings to stay in a hotel overnight. And it's at that point when he started to walk back that the officers arrested him. And Mr. King continued continually told the officers that he was not publicly intoxicated. This wasn't something he said, yeah, you're right. I'm so intoxicated, I can't take care of myself, or, or you're right. And throughout the encounter, Mr. King was very respectful. He didn't show um, signs and symptoms of somebody who was fighting with the officers, was over the top with the officers. He was very respectful, uh, as Officer Geary testified to. Um, and um, he clearly had the ability to try to call a ride-sharing app. Um, at one point, the court saw on the video that he was looking to call a taxi, and I think he was told that there are no taxis in Woodland. Um, and so I think these are all rational decisions. They're simply because he doesn't know his area, way around the area doesn't mean that he's too intoxicated to care for himself. He could have walked off. Um, there would be nothing to indicate that just because he's on foot that he's too intoxicated to care for himself. Um, that's not the standard. Um, and certainly there's nothing to suggest he was vomiting, um, that uh, something we would typically see in a 647F situation, somebody's vomiting, they're falling to the ground, um, they're uh, to the point where they're wandering around the street when they're not safe to to other people. And so for those reasons, I, there's just not probable cause to arrest him. And as a result of that, at that point, Your Honor, um, the um, search incident to arrest would be fruit of the poisonous tree uh, and all those those issues, the items that were located would be subject to suppression. Um, again, I think that Mr. Uh, King was cooperative with the officers and certainly um, did not uh, demonstrate sufficient um, intoxication to be arrested for 647 up. Mr. Vanderhoek. Thank you, Your Honor. So this is kind of a, a case of no, no good deed going unpunished. Uh, the, the officers showed up to this call where someone is having uh, uh, problems with family members uh, due to their intoxication to the point that the family members have to call the police to come intervene and remove this person from the house. Uh, and then the officers show up and they are cordial. They talk to the people there. They allow Mr. King to pack up his belongings, to move around, to try and summon a ride share. And they're there for 20 minutes trying to get him along his way to his destination. And they're, they're trying everything at their disposal to just get him out of the house where he's, he's unable to not cause problems and go somewhere else. They're not trying to arrest him. They're, they're not trying to jam him up in the house or anything of that nature. They're not cuffing him. They're not searching him. They're, they're, they're trying to get him to his de destination. And the problem is, is that Mr. King's under the influence and he's not able to do basic things like summon a ride to him. And sure, he's having problems with his app, but like sober people can figure out how to summon a ride after 20 minutes after they have the ability to access this tablet and, and do these things. Um, and, and he's just not able to do it. And so um, the, the, you don't have to be fall down, pee on yourself kind of drunk to, to be too impaired to take care of yourself or others. And here the defendant is in a situation where he's, he's under the influence and he can't get along with the people in the house. 
he can't get himself somewhere else because he can't get his electronics to work. He's under the influence and he can't drive himself anywhere. And the, the officers are trying everything they can to get him to his destination. He's just not able to do it because he's under the influence. And so after 20 minutes of trying to deal with them, the officers are in a situation where uh, if they left him there, they would be leaving him right outside the residence while he's under the influence, while he's high. And uh, this is the, they would be leaving him at the exact same residence where he just got thrown out for causing problems so that he could use the Wi-Fi of that residence to try and figure out his uh, tablet, which he hasn't been able to do during the, the, the entire interaction. At the same time, having him sit in a car uh, where he has the ability to drive in an area where he's not familiar with it. And, and him not being familiar with the area is relevant to the analysis because it, it's, are they able to take care of themselves or others given the situation, what's going on? And so, for example, if somebody is really drunk, but they're right outside their own house and all they can, all they have to do is turn around and go inside and sleep it off, that's a lot different standard than someone who is completely in an area where they have no way or ability to get anywhere else and because of their impairment can't figure out how to do it. Yeah, it, it is relevant because he doesn't know the area and because of his impairment, he can't solve that problem that he doesn't know the area. He, he really can't figure this out. And the officers, um, you know, would either be leaving him in a car where he can drive off, in the car where he's gonna go back to the house and, and get into another confrontation with these people or wander off in an area where he's completely lost while he's under the influence. Like if, if the officers did that, if the officer just said, okay, time to go, pack it up and leave, and they got in their car and drove off, as citizens, we would be really upset with the officers for doing that, for leaving this impaired individual who can't take care of himself at the residence where he was just causing problems with a motor vehicle in an area he doesn't know, and, and, and the, the officers can't do it. it. It's not even a question of probable cause. It's it would be a dereliction of their duty to leave him there in that condition with all those known problems being there. And so this isn't a, this isn't a case where he's uh, a fall down drunk, but it's certainly a case where he's a danger to himself or others. And the officers are duty bound to intervene. Uh, and so not only are the officers acting reasonably, they're acting in the only way they can after they've been there for 20 minutes trying to help the defendant get to the destination that he wants to go on his own. And, and only when everything has failed, after 20 minutes, the officer's hands are tied and they, they, they need to make sure that he is safe, make sure that others are safe and take him into custody and bring him down to the jail so that he can sober up. Um, submitted? Submitted. Can I respond to the know. argument since my motion? Um, Your Honor, it's always a question of, of probable cause because um, it's somebody's constitutional rights and that's what the court is here to decide. As citizens, we have civil liberties and rights under the Constitution that must be respected, irrespective of an officer's judgment. They have to, the judgment has to be based in Fourth Amendment principles. And that's where the issue is here. Now, I think what we're getting away from here was the initial testimony on direct that the reason the arrest occurred was because Mr. King said, Am I free to leave? And then tried to go directly to his car to drive off. But that's not what happened. The court saw the video. That is not at all what happened. Um, the court also saw the video and saw Mr. King's state of mind, and it certainly was not that of someone who couldn't take care of himself or others. And simply because he couldn't get the app to work, there's lots of people who have issues with technology, especially when a device is um, low on battery, or as Mr. King said, he gets nervous around police and police are there in his presence. And it's not like the entire 20 minutes he's sitting there trying to get the tablet to work. There's times when he's talking to the officers, as Officer Geary testified. There was times when he was gathering his belongings. So it, it's, it wasn't like the entire time he was trying to download the, the application. And certainly, I think it calls into question that the officers felt comfortable, you know, driving to a motel, leaving him at a motel where he could walk away, do whatever he wanted, be in a public place in a public li uh, lobby of a hotel. Um, then it calls into question why he would suddenly be publicly intoxicated in front of the residents. And simply because they left him there or he didn't have a ride, that seems to suggest there would be a different standard for somebody who's a pedestrian 
versus somebody uh, who has a vehicle nearby. And that's just not the case. Uh, court has to look at the constitutional rights of Mr. King, whether there was probable cause to arrest him for public intoxication. And when we're looking at public intoxication again, did he have the ability to take care of himself? Yes. You saw him pack his belongings. He was able to carry most of those belongings by himself. He was able to coherent, coherently talk to the officers. He was able to hold a conversation with them. He was able to decide that he did not want to consent uh, to a search of his person. Um, he asked appropriate questions to the officers about what hotel he'd be going to. Um, and so I think all those things show that he had an appropriate balance, appropriate judgment. Even if he was under the influence, which again, I'm not conceding, but even if he was under the influence of something, which I don't even think has been shown because uh, the officers didn't put him through any tests, um, it doesn't mean that he's publicly intoxicated. And for those reasons, I'm asking the court to uh, find that there was a lack of probable cause for the arrest and suppress uh, the items that were were located. All right. I'd like to um, ask Madam Reporter we're off, uh, to uh, confirm the sections of the video we watched on um, Tuesday. Um, I'll probably go to watch the whole video with the understanding that only the parts presented by the defense are admissible and statements other than that are not admissible for the proof, the truth of the matter. Um, and we'll be taking a break till about three. And I just want to clarify my, my motion to bring in the entirety of the defense exhibit was so that the entire exhibit, the entire interaction could be considered as to how that affected the officer and the, the effects, the, the officer's reasoning and judgment in the case. And so whether someone said something as far as made a factual assertion, that's not offered for the truth, but but everything in the video is offered for its effect on the officer. And I'm objecting again, especially regarding statements of citizens uh, that were in there, because those people well, were statements not... of non-testifying witnesses except the defendant would not be admissible on the 1538.5 because that's hearsay. Right. But so not for the truth of the matter, but for how it affects the officer, that's the only uh, way that I'm trying to, to have those admitted, because everything that happened at that scene affects the officer's judgment on the ultimate decision the officer makes. Understood. Um, and that, Madam... I, I, I'm objecting to that, Your Honor, because it's not clear that he heard everything. It's not clear that he was asked how that affected him. So I'm objecting that to that. I think that's just a overbroad uh, statement. All right. Um, Madam Reporter, could you go back uh, to Tuesday's uh, record um, to refresh what sections of the uh, video we watched then? Are we off the record, Your Honor? Off the record. So I'm I'm going to be in recess till three. I'm hoping to re, it's it's up to a half hour probably, um, or at least I'm I'm going to watch probably up until he's arrested. And and just regarding scheduling, Your Honor, I, I do have another preliminary hearing um, next door that that may start. And so if, if people come out and are wondering where I am, I, I am next door. Um, okay. If the court isn't going to hear any further argument and then the court's just going to issue its ruling at the end of this, I, I can have the person who's currently doing a preliminary hearing swap with me. And so there'll be a DA here to receive the ruling. But if there is any kind of further argument, I, I would like to be present. But I'm, I'm not I'm not planning to ask for further argument. Deep. I think everyone has made their pitch and I'm just going to rule. The only argument potentially, Your Honor, would be a 17B. That would be it. Um, but I wouldn't do that until the court has finished reviewing the evidence and, and rules. Obviously, if the court suppresses 17B's moot, I wouldn't make that argument. I'm also in the same situation as Mr. Vanderhoek because I also have a prelim next door. But if the court wants me to come back and check in at three o'clock or somewhere around then, I will let the court know if I'm engaged in a preliminary hearing that we need to do that. My goal is to be ready at three. If you, if, if both of you are available at three, be here. If you're not available, are you both going to be in nine? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Okay. If you're in nine, I'll have my clerk or bailiff check and we'll talk about um, whether we're going to finish this today or not. Okay. Uh, I'm not here tomorrow. I am here in nine all next week. Okay. And then would, would it be possible uh, to go on the record just for a moment, just so the officer can be excused and he can go about his day? Sure. Go back on. Uh, Matt, we were on the record. Yeah, we're still on the record. Oh. All right. Uh, the officer is excused. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Your Honor. And uh, Mr. King, if you can just be back on Zoom at uh, three o'clock, please. You got it. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
the officer testified that among the things he considered in uh, arresting Mr. King included, uh, he described Mr. King as pacing between the living room and the bedroom a distance of about 30 feet um, during the time they were talking to each other at the apartment. He said that Mr. King acknowledged that he had smoked marijuana earlier. He stated that Mr. King was talking fast, that Mr. King could not stand still or sit down. He thought that Mr. King was too impaired to drive. Uh, he thought that Mr. King was a danger to the public and a danger to himself. He noted that um, Mr. King was sweating. Uh, when asked about that, Mr. King stated that he was nervous around cops. In uh, reviewing the uh, video a little before the nine o'clock or the nine minute mark, um, one of the officers told him that he had not done anything criminal. Um, at about the 11 minute mark, they found a, a uh, foil or something in a bedroom. Uh, they told him he was not under arrest, but they were going to search the bedroom. Um, at about the 13 minute mark, they told him he was detained, but not free to leave. At a, a little before the 18 minute mark, they said he was free to go. Uh, several minutes later, uh, Mr. Keene uh, went out to his car with the officers and he put bags and other personal property in the trunk. Um, it was clear that the officers were annoyed or frustrated by uh, the slow pace in resolving this call. Uh, just before he was arrested, Mr. Uh, King uh, stated he wanted to go back to his car to get personal property out of his vehicle for the hotel. Um, at that point, he was uh, detained and arrested for uh, public intoxication. In viewing the video, the video does not corroborate that he was talking fast during the time he was interacting with the police. The video did not show that he could not stand still or that he would not sit down. The video did not show that he was pacing between the living room and the bedroom. Um, I would note that uh, less than a minute after the officers entered the apartment and started talking to uh, Mr. King, they asked to search him, which he uh, declined to do. Um, the video did not support that the uh, defendant tried to drive himself away when he went outside. Um, the other officer made some comment that he was high as fuck, uh, although the video did not support that description. Uh, during the interchange, Mr. King was polite and respectful. Uh, the video did not support probable cause that the defendant was drunk in pub public or vi in violation of Penal Code 647F. The officer did not have probable cause to arrest him for 647F based upon all the evidence. And I would comment that the officer's testimony uh, as to his observations um, of, of Mr. King were simply not credible and they were not corroborated by uh, what was on the video. Uh, because the officers did not have probable cause to arrest him for 647F, uh, the search incident to the arrest was illegal and the court grants the request to suppress all evidence seized from that search. Uh, as a result of that, there, no holding order is made and the charges are dismissed. Is there anything else we need to do today? There's no bail bond, is there? I don't I don't believe so, Your Honor. I think he was released on the order. Would, I, I would, would the parties like the court to hold on to the exhibits? No. Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. They can be returned to the exhibits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Well, what did you guys think? Um, I 
Well, first, I don't understand the drunken public thing. When you're in your house and you're drunk or high and they convince you to go outside, now you're in the public, but you're in the public because the police made you go into the public. It reminds me of that Ron White. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that of Ron White, but he's a comedian. And he has a, a skit where he talks about being drunk in a bar and being thrown out into public. <laughs> I wanted to be drunk in the bar, not in public. You guys made me go into public, <laughs> which is exactly what these officers did. And I really didn't like the uh, district attorney at every turn saying how drunk he was. He couldn't figure out the app because he was so drunk and it was taking him so long to, you know, get out of the house. You know, 20 minutes is nothing. It would take me 20 minutes just to brush my teeth and put my shoes on. And that's 20 minutes is ridiculous to say that that's too much time. Besides, he's got to think about what he needs to pack, you know, where he's going to go tomorrow, possibly school or work or whatever. But he's got to figure all that stuff out at the same time trying to download an app that you don't understand and you don't know where you're going or how you're going to get there. And the police are peppering you with questions the entire time. And it would take me that long just to, just to download the stupid app because our Wi-Fi is so slow here. So, I mean, th th I think that's a stretch. I, I think that's a significant stretch to say 20 minutes was too long for him to take. That was ridiculous. So I'm really glad the judge made the decision that he made. They were hoping just to suppress the evidence of the search, but the judge decided to throw the whole case out which is exactly what should have happened in the first place. I mean, it, I kind of felt like they were trying to entrap the young man by saying, you're free to go, you're free to go. But they were hoping that he was going to get in the car and drive. And that way they could arrest him. So instead they arrested him for being drunk in public where they made him go out into the public. It's just kind of shady. I hope uh, they, some, they got reprimanded or something happened to these officers for what they tried to do because I think that's despicable. I, I thought that was completely wrong. And I think the, the district attorney was completely wrong by exaggerating how drunk he was when he watched the same video that the, the um, judge watched. The judge said, I don't see it. But somehow this district attorney thought he was so drunk. You'd think the guy was falling on his face or something. And he, he, obviously he wasn't or the judge would have seen that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'd love to hear them and I'll see you next time.